Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular scheduled meeting, City Board of Commissioners, October 12, 2021. We're going to have uh, Commissioner Ryan McCord lead the pledge, followed by Commissioner Truman Sinsley III on the invitation. Please rise. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, uh, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious heaven and father, we're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance in the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work with the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Welcome, everybody, tonight. First item is winning a motion to amend the agenda to consider an executive session pursuant to OCGA 5014-21 for the purpose of consulting and meeting with legal counsel pertaining to pending or potential litigation, settlement claims, administrative proceedings, or other jurisdiction actions brought or to be brought by or against the agency or any officer or employee or in which the agency or any officer or employee may be directly involved. This will be item number 13. We have a motion to bring the agenda. Ms. Murray with a motion, Mr. Brock with a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Seven and zero. Thank you. Under presentations and delegations, recognize September's strongest link in the chain recipient, Amanda Carmichael, Accounting Director, Chief Financial Officer, Marcus Schwab, will address. Well, good evening. Welcome. Good, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, today's a, a unique honor again. Uh, Amanda is one of our unsung heroes, and I'm happy to be here presenting Amanda to you today as a recipient for the strongest link in the chain of work. Amanda started back in 2004, right? 2004. So she's been here a little bit longer than I have for about three years. But uh, in that short time, from 2007 forward, Amanda's really proven herself to be uh, knowledgeable, experienced, cash managing, handling all the day-to-day uh, -day transactions. So when Chuck announced his retirement in June, Amanda was our logical choice. So fast forward, fraught with challenges, some insanity within the department, which is normally a very quiet and stable, you know, status quo department. We now had all this upheaval and turmoil, and Amanda was the wonderful recipient of, hey, here's your pile. You get to juggle all these different things. So she, with a cool head and calm approach, confident, even though she approached me and said, I'm not so sure about this, mm -hmm. with all the turmoil coming in with personnel changes and everything, and the audit and closing. but. Together, we worked it out and with confidence. She stood up and she took the challenge like a super trooper and uh, really shone through with confidence, calm, smiles. Even though she was here every weekend, I can attest to that personally. Uh, she held the, the audit together, managed to do the closings, juggled personnel with quite the finesse. So, I'm really, really proud of having Amanda on our team and in, in that leadership role as an accounting director. So without further ado, Amanda Carmichael. I want to thank Marcus for the nomination and all the directors that awarded me. I could not have done it without the team and Marcus's board, but I appreciate the nomination and the, the award. Thank you for recognizing me. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Appreciate your service. Uh oh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah we have one of these. Uh, one of the little this is so, let's see, how are we going to do this? I hold one, you, you hold, hold one, one, and I'm going to give you a, a handshake and a little bit of that. Will that one, two, three. You're overthinking it. One, two, <laughs> three. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. We're going to continue with the review of the financial report for August 2021. 
the energy financial officer, Marcus Schwab, will address. Okay, so I have uh, one primary uh, point to bring out this time around for the month of August. I don't want you to jump for joy too quick. There's uh, an extra four and a quarter million dollars sitting in the general fund to bring that balance to roughly $14.8 million. Please don't spend it all in one place. That is the American Recovery Plan, Rescue Plan Act monies. That's reserved and restricted. So that's all I have for that. And this is August, so we're two months into the fiscal year. And the audit, they're working through it. They're working through it, peer review, trying to go through the analytics at this point. We've turned over all the data and it's in their hands, and I'm waiting. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Are there any questions of Mr. Schwab? No, good job, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Have a safe day. Including the citizens' comment. At this time, the mayor opens the floor to comments from the audience. The comments should relate to specific specific agenda items not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to have been served in the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and not a form of unlimited expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters to main city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff with resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left that'd like to come before the board? Is there anybody on my left? Is there anybody on my right that needs to come before the board? Okay. Moving no public hearing tonight, we have a consent agenda. Items three, four, and five. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, uh, can you take out the minutes? We've no, we, we got you on the yeah, number six right on, the, okay. on the next one. So right. we've got a motion from Mr. Brock, a second from Ms. Murray. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We have for items three, four, and five, we have a motion from Brock, second by Murray. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Seven, zero. And then item six is to consider moving the regular agenda. Item six, consider minutes of the Board of Commissioners regular meeting September 28th, and that's the meeting where Commissioner Flowers was absent. Do we have a motion to approve item six? So move. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Move a second. second. Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor. Signal by raising your hand. And one abstention. Six, zero, one with Ms. Flowers abstaining. Item seven, consider a proposal for Davy Resources Group, Inc. Single source for the hazardous tree assessment tree inventory update in the amount of $56,500. Pleasure of the board. I have a question. Okay. Is this quarterly or how do we do this? It happens quarterly? about every five years. We do it for risk management in order to look at what the uh, hazardous trees are there. When we create a priority list five through one, we start taking the fives and work our way down. And it's just an inventory, it's not. Yes, ma'am. They've already got our GIS stuff. They've done it twice and they'll go out and then it'll populate through the GIS system and produce the report. Do we have a motion to approve? Mrs. Ward with a motion. Do we have a second? Mrs. Murray with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. Seven, zero. Moving to item A, consider resolution for the Georgia the Environmental Finance Authority, GFA extend the loan repayment start date to October 1, 2022 for DW 2020-0038 for the Department of Watershed Management. <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Brock with a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Seven, zero. Item nine is to consider a resolution for the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority, GFA, to extend the start date for loan repayment to October 1, 2022, for GFA loan CW 2020 for the Department of Watershed Management. Mrs. Ward with a motion. With Second by Mr. McCord. All in favor, signal by raising your hand. <laughs> Seven, zero. He did request the information. I said second. Uh, who said I said please? <laughs> well, I second it. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Item 10, consider me a power cell of excess reserve capacity of the city of Beaufort on behalf of the city of Griffin. Mm -hmm. I have a motion for Ms. Ward, a second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, signal by raise your hand. <laughs> Seven, zero. 
Item 11 is consider resolution amending the inner participant contract resolution between the City of Griffin and Electric Cities of Georgia pertaining to joint purchasing. Second question to approve. Mr. McCord with a motion. Ms. Murray with a second. Question. We've got a question from Ms. Flowers. Can you succinctly explain to me in like two sentences? I read this, but I was still a little confused. So the way they used to price it out is they had a minimum and a maximum. And so they would kind of, I guess, depending on what, how the cities use the service for joint purchasing, they would kind of bill it that way. And so what they're doing is they're changing it to where it's uniform across the board. So all of the cities that are in that particular, um, use that particular category, which is joint purchasing, we do. Um, they're just um, averaging it out across all of the cities. So it'll increase our budget from what they originally proposed by um, a little less than $800. So, so, so as opposed to, it's not like flat rate fee, it's like, hey, the average everybody paid a thousand dollars divided by 10 is a hundred. Like it's, yeah, they're just averaging it out among all of the cities that participate in that particular service. Okay. Yes. Um, rather than waiting it, is how they used to do it, kind of, they weighted it as a, you know, like how much you used, I guess, or how much you did use the joint purchasing. Now it's just a flat across the board and they do an average. But in terms of budgeting, because it's an average, we, we won't know until... No, they come meet with us in about May of every year and they gave us that number, then they'll be able to do that maybe even easier for budget purposes next okay. year. So we always know ahead of time. So this will be different than what we budgeted, but only by some Right. And on top of that, um, we just got back the year end settlement. Um, I just got that in the mail, so that'll be on the next meeting for you guys. And they'll uh, apply that amount to our bill each month. So really, it's going to be, it's really, I mean, it is going up, but yeah, you know, I, I'm, watch. I'm less concerned about the 765 and just whether or not we're transitioning to because now it's a flat fee. If we lose the benefit of, hey, we were at the lower end of the price spectrum, all that, and now it's, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so I think that. <clears throat> that may be why they're doing this though because I think a lot of cities are not participating in this particular service and so they're trying to increase that participation and so we may even see it drop what, what we used to pay because they're going to increase that participation because it is a flat fee instead of just how you use it. Okay, right. Okay. Because I would say that we I mean, we do use joint purchasing so we would not be on that probably that lower tier. We would probably be on the upper tier because we definitely participate in that music. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have questions? We have a motion from Mr. McCord, second by Ms. Murray. All in favor, please signify raise your hand. Seven zero. Item 12 is consider on first reading an ordinance amending chapter 22 buildings and building regulations by adding a new article to be numbered article seven short term rentals of the code of Griffin, Georgia in order to create and administer regulations for short term rental housing. Do a motion to approve. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Seven zero. And before we go into item 13 of the executive session, we're going to do the city manager report, city attorney, and city commissioner comments. Just very briefly, I wanted y'all to know the good news that we have been able to disperse all of our CARES Act money that we set aside for utility assistance. So the Salvation Army, I think about a week ago now, was able to pay out that last amount. Um, so we were able to give that back to our citizens um, for utility assistance. So that's great news, and we'll get some final numbers from them in a final report that we can share publicly. Um, and then also just want to thank the mayor and Chief Yates for inviting me to go to the Exchange Club Main of the Year. Uh, luncheon today that was Quimby Melton the third um, he is the third Quimby Melton to receive that award so I thought that that was a very um, prestigious honor and a lot of it was to do with our honor our KIA work that he has done with, with the plaques around town and then also the addition of African-American soldiers on the World War One monument so that was a big deal and I was glad to see him recognized that's it Mr. Whalen nothing further Mr. McCoy, I uh, just want to continue prayers for a, a lot of the families that's dealing with um, this terrible COVID-19, and I just want us to just remain prayerful for our community uh, at large and 
encourage people to get out and get vaccinated. That's all I have. Okay. Mrs. Hart. Um, I just want to, is Amanda still here? Our strongest link, Amanda, uh, I know that she greatly deserved that and uh, I've worked with her for many years and I think she's a great asset and I just thank you for nominating her. Well deserved. And uh, thank you to all of our staff. But no further comment. <coughs> Mrs. Flowers? No comment. Mrs. Ward? No comment. Mr. Tinsley? Nothing here. Mr. Braves? Go Braves. <laughs> so, um, go Braves. So, uh, Absolutely. And dogs. So, October 28th is the downtown trick or treating. It's from six, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So, businesses will be downtown. And of course, there's some stuff going back and forth on social media of when Halloween trick or treating is. And so, I talked to Mrs. O'Connor and the city basically. I mean, we can't control what neighborhoods, neighborhoods do, residences October 31 is Halloween. Halloween. It's a Sunday. So uh, everyone, please be safe out there and get ready to dump hundreds of. Isn't, some people will be all weekend, all weekend long and a lot of fun. But I'm getting lucky. So uh, Truman says, come to his house. He'll be sitting there waiting. So. He's going to be working. So, um, What's the address? Blue Ridge, Georgia? Blue Ridge. Come there on. you go. Ridge. So that being said, um, we have a motion to go into executive session. We have a motion from Mr. Ford, second by Mr. Tinsley. Thank you, everybody, for your service.